Good morning. Thanks for coming. Uh, this is a small presentation about a new hyaluronic acid filler from the States, from Miami, uh, called Liquid Implant. So I'm happy to share with you some knowledge about how to choose the right filler and how to work with the right filler. So um, the ideal facial shape basically is um, balance in volume and shape. Whereas the aging phase does age in all different levels, such as the skin, the um, redistribution and resorption of the fat pads, the weakening of facial muscles, skeletal changes, and overall a three-dimensional kind of deflation of the structures. So uh, any um, aging phase does end in having fuzzy con Tears, concavities shows shadows and overexposures. So we basically aim to rebalance shape and volume with, in this case, hyaluronic acid fillers. So hyaluronic acid is a very common and forgiving substance for filler injections, as it is reversible with hyaluronidase and does show a very low hypersensitivity activity. Uh, basically, companies do ch do provi pro provide these fillers by changing their features by different cross-linking processes uh, to give the gel a certain firmness by um, adding different concentrations of hyaluronic acid and by um, milling the hyaluronic acid down to different particle sizes and non-particulate gel for better um, injectability. So this engineering makes it a bit more difficult to choose the right hyaluronic acid for the right indication as there are so many different ones, whereas for example a calcium hydroxylapatite or a polycaprolactone is uh, basically constructed in the same way. So I have the honor to present Liquid Implant today here, which is a cross-linked hyaluronic acid um, manufactured from non-animal, a medical grade hyaluronic acid, cross-linked for sure, with always the concentration of 25 milligrams per mil. And these fine particles are blended in a uncross-linked linear HA to enhance its injection. So. Um, hyaluronic acid of um, liquid implant is um, a very um, uh, good to inject substance with um, a very similar to the uh, physiological HA um, having a pH and very low endotoxin levels. So the manufacturing process is basically a complex process of, of um, dissoluting the HA and then um, milling the gel and then finally pack it into the glass syringes um, for the doctor's use. More interesting, um, the clinical features for us being doctors, this gel is pseudo-elastic with a good yield stress and a, um, a solid like but very soft features under pressure. So this gel does not move um, having gravity on it um, and is very easy to inject. But, and secondly, this different, uh, the different degrees of cross-linking makes it uh, suitable for different indications. It's biocompatible and biodegradable. So. Um, this, uh, the testings and my clinical experience over many years now shows that this product, this hyaluronic acid is biocompatible and does um, show a high safety profile. What are the indications we can go for with liquid implant? It's basically from surface to shape. Uh, you have three products for all the typical indications, such as the very fine lines and sensitive areas as the tear trough and lip for the labium, and then uh, cutis for the more pronounced lines and folds, and the shaper and volumizer subcutis for mid-face hands, etc. So I will show you how to use liquid implant for mid-face today. 
the indications, typical indications for the mid phase for me are, is the sag lateral part, the sunken and frontal part, as well as the nasolabial fold. A mapping might help to find the right entry points. So the two basic first lines I do draw is the line which goes perpendicularly down from the lateral orbit and the other line coming from the mid momentum crossing this line is one of the injection or entry points, the cheek apex point. And here I did mark the um, uh, zygomatic arch entry point, the lateral approach for the lateral lifting. So we will basically um, fan from this lateral point whoops, and bolus from the cheek apex point. So the technique for the sag lateral part with liquid implant is shown here by using a blunt cannula 25, one and a half inch. Uh, the entry point is done obviously with a sharp needle. The trick is to uh, tunnel the way with the needle, tunnel the direction you will insert the cannula later on, then it's far easier to inject, then to second trick pinch this entry point and insert the cannula by using a low pressure, never force really and um, this candle is a stereogly which has a hub marking so we can see where the hole actually is and can point the hole down for a um, profound injection. So this is uh, pinch the skin and the structures to insert the candle softly and gently, control the tip where the tip of the candle will end up which is actually the frontal part of the cheek, then turn the um, uh, in this case, the cannula down to make sure that the um, positioning of the liquid implant cutis is on the bone. Control, again, where the tip of the cannula is located and use a light pressure on the plunger and inject this volumizing and shaping product to the designated area. The technique for the sunken and frontal part actually in this case is shown by bolusing the area. So you will choose uh, either the cheek apex point, the highest point of the cheek where it has been or will be after the treatment, has been in the youth and will be after the treatment. And secondly, you go banana-wise medial and lateral to this as the volumizing effect is um, desired. So. Uh, this video is showing both techniques in a combination, same patient on her right side. And this is the fanning with a 25 gauge, one and a half cannula with liquid implant cutis. I do basically three or four threads with 0.1 cc per thread, depending on the needs. Uh, on, and I never overcorrect, I never go over the clinical endpoint. You can see how this product does a very nice shape immediately once implanted. And uh, I simply go along the OG curve to redefine this youthful look to erase the negative shades and to rebalance the face, in this case, uh, on the lateral to give her back a lateral lifting. And secondly, um, this video will show the um, bolusing then from uh, the cheek apex point. In order to uh, save time here, I will um, advance the video. So this is, again, the bolusing with liquid implant cutis, place it on the bone, gunshot wise, look to your patient eyes and go directly uh, on the bone, place the material super porosely. So showing you uh, the last technique of this course of this session is the nasolabial fold. I start with the, to smooth out the alo tragus um, the, the ala area by doing a little puncture and giving a little bolus um, with aspiration first and then um, to this area because that is far less 
painful and goes quite quick. This smooths out and gives a rebalancing active uh, or action to this proximal part of the nasolabial fold, whereas in this case the liquid implant cutis, subcutis sorry, is placed with a uh, cannula to make the long run uh, of the nasolabial fold looking more soft and smooth. So to insert the cannula you go to 45 degrees, lift up the cannula a bit and then advance always direction medially. Never augment, think of the medial cantal line, never augment lateral to this line here. Whoops. And go fanning wise, again with a 0.1 cc of the subcutis per thread up to the clinical endpoint. So some before after pictures showing liquid implant uh, subcutis, lateral lifting, frontal projection, nasal label fold um, enhancement immediately after. You can see the shining of the shade here of the, of the light, uh, which proves that subcutis is a very nice immediate shaping of this injected area. Okay? So in conclusion, liquid implant is a new, might be a new hyaluronic acid filler for you from the United States. Um, BDDE cross-linked, in, provided in different concentrations for different indications. And technique-wise, I always go like this. Identify the individual indication, go for the problem directly, then define the right filler features for this indication, and at the end of the day, apply this filler in a safe and please anatomically specific um, way. Okay. So that was one of these great products of this company. I can only tell I use various different hyaluronic acids and other uh, biodegradable fillers in my clinic. And, um, but this is a very uh, good one, a very safe one, a nice one to inject patients simply like. Thank you.